it's just, I, I'd like to, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Satan, I'd like to thank Louis Armstrong, I'd like to thank Neil Young, I'd like to thank the Rollins Band, I'd like to thank Bob Marley, I'd like to thank the Marx Brothers, I'd like to thank Salvador Dali, I'd like to thank Louis Bluewell, I'd like to thank Miles Davis, I'd like to thank, thank uh, the Parliament Funkadelic, and uh, I'd like to thank you too.
there is a fork in the road that's approaching you. And you can stay on the path which curves to the left by denying the existence of Satanism in the fullness that you've been shown. Or you can surrender to the truth and take the right hand path. Now where that road could lead is the sweetest risk you'll ever take. Are you still pretending that this one eye religion of Freemasonry isn't Luciferianism? See, this here is the biggest obstacle you'll ever face. The very thing that could lead you to the prize is the very thing that will keep you from it. The reality of international Satanism. In the shadow of Christianity, Satanism has always been there. With every church that sprung up, so did its invisible enemy, the Satanic Church. Growing out of sight and out of mind from this to this. And Christianity has long been deprived of its power, as clearly demonstrable by the absolute lack of preaching against the institution of Freemasonry. Satanism's magic cloak, Satanism's magic trick, that's Freemasonry. And how they are laughing for now. So Freemasons are now are at the helm of the power structure of society, which means Satanism rules. And they're making their move for the new order of the ages. Are you that besotted by this evil world that you'll even deny the existence of secret societies? And what about the American president, John Kennedy? Was he just a nut job like me? Warning us about an international secret society with an international secret plot. A Freemason trying to tell you and the world about Freemasonry. Shot through the head. I've shown you who they are. I've shown you how they successfully operate with degrees of initiations and horrific and illegal oaths of secrecy. And I've shown you why they are a secret society. I've proven it to you. And only now that I've done that, I can show you in this many minutes what the shocking new order that Freemasonry has so cautiously been guiding us toward actually looks like. And of course you won't believe that either. By now there's a 98.5% chance that you belong to the world. And in that case, the world can do, will do, and is doing whatever the hell it wants to do with you. And when all you have is the world, you'll do anything to hold on to it. Christian or not, most of you will follow this world straight to the slaughterhouse in the name of peace, safety, and progress. Clinging to it. Because all you love is inside it. Blissfully ignoring people like me, warning you of who's really in charge of it. Men, women, actors, singers, businessmen and politicians, all interlocked, whose God is named Lucifer. You've seen it with your own eyes, but now you can hear it with your own ears from this 33 degree Freemason in person, just in case the Masonic literature wasn't enough for you. Pure, virtuous, wholesome, innocent individual that's out to help people. Lucifer is? Yeah. Lucifer, say that again. Lucifer is a pure, holy... Virtuous. Virtuous. Now, see the Lucifer that God created? That's the same one. Oh, man, this is great. I'm going to put this on the internet. Oh, Amen. God bless you, Amen. brother. Because that's exactly what the Shriners and Masons teach, is that Lucifer, Lucifer is light. No. And you're, what you're about those hospitals? They, they, they you know what, sir? <clears throat> Jesus said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did not, we did not do these good deeds in your name. And you'll say, away from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Jesus said, in Matthew chapter 5. You've been bred from childhood to fall for the biggest lie ever told, that Satan doesn't exist. And if Satan doesn't exist, well, then neither does Jesus. And while your heroes, heroes and idols, know full well that they do exist. And when I say you've been bred from childhood, I mean just that. Walter Disney was a high-ranking Freemason. He is a Masonic stamp dedicated to him, and he's very exclusive Club 33, which stands for the 33 degrees of Freemasonry. And who's the god of the 33rd degree Freemason, Walt Disney? 
Well, Walter hides the answer in plain sight, because that's what Freemasons do. Firstly, the God of Mr. Disney is wicked. See how they veil evil with a cloak of innocence? What does the word veil itself conceal? Secondly, Walter's God is horny, symbolized by the horned God of the witches. And we all know Walt Disney loves magic, which is witchcraft. So the depictions of sex are hidden in plain sight as well. Remember, lust produces life, not love. So lust is purity. Lust is love for the high degree Freemason. And thirdly, he hides the number of his God's name in the open as well. No, no, that's not a triple six he's seeing interwoven in the design. That would be ridiculous, wouldn't it? Not even when they separate the sixes from the name, all three of them, and place them together for you like this, in plain sight. No, not even then will people see. Do you think things are any better 50 years later? Here's the Eye of Lucifer in the, Nick, in the Nickelodeon channel and his lightning flash. Remember what they actually believe about Satan. From Freemason Helena Blavatsky's book, The Secret Doctrine, meaning the secret belief, who is Satan? He is the angel who was proud enough to believe himself God, brave enough to buy his independence at the price of eternal suffering and torture, beautiful enough to have adored himself in full divine light, strong enough to still reign in darkness amidst agony. Helena Blavatsky is suggested as recommended reading by the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry right here. And the Grand Pontiff of Universal Freemasonry, speaking of Lucifer, Satan and the Devil, on page 407, writes that, To the initiate, the Devil is the instrument of liberty or free will. That's who Lucifer is to them, okay? To show you how little you know of who you're dealing with and the extent of this religion's influence and power, not to mention their plans, let me jump ahead for a minute. Watch this. This is Lucius Trust. The Lucius Trust is a non-for-profit service organization incorporated in the United States in 1922. And their objective from Lucius Trust website, dedicated to the establishment of a new and better way of life for everyone in the world, based on the fulfillment of the divine plan for humanity. The divine plan. A new way of life. Like a new world system. Like a new order. Now you want to see who they work for? The Lucius Trust has consultative status with the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations. The United Nations, the UN. They consult the United Nations of the world. They advise the United Nations of the world. Now look at this. The Lucius Trust's publishing company was founded in the early 1920s as Lucifer Publishing Company. The Lucius Trust says that the name was probably chosen to honor Lucifer. What on earth does a modern day consultant to the most powerful and progressive force engaged in uniting all nations under one banner, the UN, have to do with the fallen angel of the Holy Bible, the one that Jesus Christ told us would manifest on earth as a world ruler to deceive the whole world into a new world system. Yes, that angel. Why on earth would they honor that angel? Well, that's easy. They were founded by Freemasons. Incorporated into the United States by Alice Bailey and her husband, Foster, well, here's a book written by Foster the Freemason, The Spirit of Freemasonry, published by Lucius Press, also known as Lucifer Publishing. And one last thing. If you dig a little, you'll find an article on their website, The Esoteric Meaning of Lucifer, on a modern company website with consultative powers to the United Nations of all things. Wow, I really hope you're seeing this. In the article, it states that the Baileys had enormous respect for H.P. Blavatsky, who stated in her renowned occult book, The Secret Doctrine, on page 245 in a chapter called Holy Satan. It is Satan who is the God of our planet and the only God. 
Then the article goes on to say that the Baileys sought to elicit a deeper understanding of the sacrifice made by Lucifer. Everything has been reversed. Evil is good. Jesus is the enemy. And Lucifer sacrificed himself for you, not Jesus Christ. The one who washed the feet of his disciples and the only one they fear. Modern progressive atheists do not influence world events, people. Satanists do. Remember the goal of the Lucius Trust? The fulfillment of the divine plan for humanity. Yeah, the divine plan exposed by Jesus Christ in the Gospels. Hence their war on the Bible and the abolition of it from the school system and even from modern Christian churches who dare not preach from the book of Revelation. Your most highly evolved and contemporary leaders of, of society secretly believe that in the theos theosophical perspective, the descent of these solar angels was not a fall into sin or disgrace, but rather an act of great sacrifice. They believe in the fallen angels and their revolt against God, as revealed in the Bible, led by the devil, the chief commander of Freemason Bob Dylan, remember? These people make contact with these fallen angels, with the royal art of Freemasonry called witchcraft. Please stick around. Let me show you that. How many solar angels does the Bible say followed Lucifer out of this heaven, heavenly realm? A third of the angels makes 33%. Does that number sound familiar yet? 33 degrees of Freemasonry. Just a coincidence. From the Gospels again, which expose these people every time. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels and who has access to some visionary world beguile you, trick you of your reward. You still don't believe that the false humility of the charitable fraternity of the Freemasons is behind it all? Well, Blavatsky also published a magazine called Lucifer with a woman named Annie Besant. And here's a letter written by Annie herself with the official Masonic letterhead. And here Annie signs off as a 33rd degree Freemason. Printed also in the left-hand corner, Annie Besant, 33rd degree, and a member of the Supreme Council. Undeniable and undisputable, please don't make me prove it to you over and over. Have you caught a glimpse of who you're dealing with yet? They're all Freemasons, high ranking. And they're all buffeted by a plethora of Masonic dupes who don't know any of this because they can't decipher the symbols and they don't care to try. They're proud and boastful and defensive of their beloved fraternity in which they get to rub shoulders with the most important people of their suburbs, cities and towns and in which they got on their knees to take blood oaths of death, calling other old, decrepitated men worshipful master. Yet still they think it's innocent and has nothing to hide. Delusional and lost, almost beyond hope. Some of them still think it's a Christian organization, just like the founder of the, the Satanic Church described. What do you get when you carefully conceal Satanism with Christianity? You get Freemasonry. People, Satanism is at the core of our world and it is behind the new order that will be implemented soon enough. It will be all done through deception. You'll be tricked. Remember how I told you that the all-seeing eye sees that we're in hell? Well, the massive witch and Freemason Helena says so right here. Satan is the minister of God, Lord of the seven mansions of Hades, the angel of of the manifest worlds. Hades means hell, manifest worlds means earth. This is who you're dealing with. This is the religion and the beliefs of the rich, powerful and famous. And yes, politicians. Do you want to go back to sleep? You can sleep after this. Well, wait till I show you what they're going to do to you. Coming up in this many minutes. For those who simply refuse to believe that Bono or Scott Morrison or Prince can be Luciferians because they all go to church. Let me show you another Masonic ritual they do. And this is before Satanism or Luciferianism is revealed to the candidate. 
And then you tell me if Bono or Scott are capable of secretly believing in Lucifer. It all starts here with the Masonic apron. Different kinds signifying different grades. Have you guessed what it's hiding yet? The genitals. Pretty obvious, like everything else they hide once you can see. The genitals are the true working tools of a Mason. Freemasonry is foundationally a sex cult, like Satanism, because it all starts with sex, doesn't it? Life itself starts with sex. So the mystical force of the true God of Freemasonry hides in the hidden part of the human body. That's the Holy of Holies, covered by the Masonic apron, the seat of God, the seat of Lucifer. See here with Satanist King Diamond's artwork? The eye is attached to the horn God, but look at where the eye starts, from the waist down. That's where the apron of a mason begins. And the one eye of Freemasonry is also the one eye of the penis, where life generates and springs forth. See the openly hidden secret of the Masonic Square and Compass now? You're looking at the sex act. That's the female in missionary position, and that's the male mounting her. The sex act. And the eye in the middle, with these emanating rays, is the orgasm and the ejaculation of the penis. See life shooting forth. That's how they see the sun and the earth too. The sun is the visible penis of their true God, shooting forth life continually. The light itself is the mystical sperm of the God of this world. The sun and penis generate life, while the earth and female womb produce life. The letter G, when replacing the I in the middle of the square and compass, stands for generation, sexual generation. The practical aspect of Freemasonry and Satanism's religion is that of a sex cult. You see Rod Stewart telling you he's a Freemason? By displaying the hidden hand of Freemasonry, also known as the master of the second veil, and look at his other hand, taking the Masonic apron's place for covering his penis which is the Holy of Holies, the seat of God for the Mason. And from the Grand Pontiff of Freemasonry, Albert Pike, hence the significancy of the phallus, the penis, or of its inoffensive substitute, the obelisk. Straight from the horse's mouth, the erect penis graces us, or should I say disgraces us, with its presence in every country in the world, marking its territory, the Masonic obelisk, in our face, everywhere making its bold statement, yelling, screaming in silence. This is another reason why we're considered the ignorant and stupid masses. Another example of hidden in plain sight. And here's an erect penis on the front page of the female Freemasonry magazine, The Eastern Star. I once stood in front of this obelisk in Sydney and I must have asked 30 people what they thought it was. Not a single one of them knew. To the Freemasons of the higher degrees, the whole universe is in fact one giant and continuous sex act. This is the structure of Freemasonry. You can take this path to the top or this path. And way up here, you have the order of the mystic shrine. The mystic shrine is what's found behind the Masonic apron, because that's where life comes from. That's the mystic shrine. You have to be a 32nd degree Freemason to be asked to join the order of the mystic shrine. And then, once you're inside, you can be invited to join this order, the Royal Order of Jesters. See, Freemasonry is like Russian dolls, and Satanism is at its center. Look at some of the pins and the pell designs for the Order of the Jesters. You can only join them unless you're at least a 32nd degree Freemason. Sex and debauchery. Erections the adoration of the phallus, masturbation, devils, demons, fallen angels, this one here mocking holiness, reference to the anus, and sodomy, anything to mock the Bible. This disgusting one has King Momus sitting on a female's face and hidden in plain sight is the square and the compass for those who have eyes to see. Bestiality, yes indeed. 
this bagpipe player has an erection and the sheep is running away scared. Self-explanatory. This one, this character has an emphasized eye, if you can see that, and the skull has an emphasized eye also. The wink and the one eye of the Indian. And the secrecy, the symbols of secrecy. On the far right here, the monkey covers his groin area, symbolizing the Masonic apron. And the black and white dogs, well, they symbolize the checkered floorboard of the Masonic Lodge, which is sexualized male and female principles. The horned god, where evil and good don't exist. And in the first degree, Masons are given a Bible stamped with a square and compass oblivious to the inherent mockery and the foundation of the whole fraternity as alluded to here with a genuine royal order of jester's private lapel. This is a certificate that a jester receives after his initiation and you see here their patron is named King Momus and he was a god or a daemon which is a variant of the word demon who was expelled from heaven as the legend goes, sounds just like Lucifer, because it is. Did Freemasonry disassociate themselves from the tax-exempt branch of Freemasonry known as the Jesters? Well, no, they didn't, because, I mean, this is rare footage of an event within, within the Lodge. Now, I'm sorry about the quality of this, but this is a Masonic Lodge. So for Masons that want to say that the Jesters are contrary to Masonry, well, look. Look at these dirty old men, masters of the lodge, with s sublime morals, all married, probably all have daughters and granddaughters, yet still this, inside the lodge. But for you it should be obvious, because you can see the square and compass, the sex act, and the all-seeing eye, right in the middle. I told you that Satanism was the oldest religion in the world, and it is. The sex act was ritualized and organized as a religion before we called it Satanism. But Satan has always been the god, the horny god, the horned god of these sex cults. All of them, from Samaria to Egypt to Greece and so on, that's called, that's called paganism. And the real Bible of the Freemasons and the pagans, the one not written by hand, the one that's older than any book, the one that supersedes all the rest in age, thus making it the purest and most unadulterated word of God in the eyes of the Freemasons, is nature. Nature is their Bible. And before you think there's nothing wrong with that, wait a second, because you're not thinking straight. Ask a Mason whether he be a first degree or a 33rd degree, what is Freemasonry? And the universal go-to answer is this. A peculiar system of morality, veiled in allegory and illustrated by symbols. Now why would you need to veil your morals? Because in their peculiar system, evil is good and good is evil. That's Satanism 101. A peculiar system of morals. That should tell you something. That should tell you everything. Why would your morals need to be a secret? Because their deeds are in fact evil. Glorifying the laws of nature where cruelty and self-obsession obsession are virtuous characteristics. That's nature. Nature is as cruel as she is kind. The checkered floorboard where everything is legal. It's Christianity that lives in reverse. The first shall be last. Love your enemies. The meek shall inherit the earth. These are unholy and unnatural concepts in the eyes of visible nature. The nature of Freemasonry, which is Satanism. What the Freemasons really mean by this morality veiled in allegory is that they're allowed to steal because nature allows it. They're allowed to kill because nature allows it. They're allowed to commit adultery because nature isn't monogamous. They're allowed to lie, indulge in all their God-given senses, especially sexual because nature encourages it as long as no one finds out under oath. Jesus said, narrow is the road that leads to life and broad is the road that leads to destruction. The Freemason of the century says, no true Mason can be narrow for his lodge is the divine expression of all broadness because broad are the divine 
laws of nature. While they glorify those laws, Christianity breaks those laws. It becomes supernatural because only then can you love your enemy. And so it goes that Christianity is despised by Freemasonry, the real Freemasons, because their Bible is nature. And by nature, they know the personality traits of their God, Satan.